Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode number 20 here in the Systematic Factory. Can't believe we're at episode 20 already. We're getting close to cycle number 1000. And in between the last episode and this one, I've been doing some stuff just to clean up. First thing, first and foremost, is I finished this last tamer for our cobalt volcano. It's the same as all the others. I just installed it and got everything running. And it is running nice and cool and providing us with more cobalt. I also added in a refiner in here for gold because I do not have a gold volcano on this planetoid, so we don't have access to it, and I needed it to build some stuff. So they're just making me some gold. I'll shut it off when I have enough. The iron one is still working fine up here. I have way too much water in there. I'm probably going to have to take some out, but I'm just letting it go to see what happens. It might all turn to steam at some point here. It's pretty close to the steam point, so a couple more times of dumping heat in there. It might actually do it. We have everything going around cooling just fine. So it's working great. They're all working great. The other thing I did was I just cleaned up this area down here a little bit, uh, extended it down so that we now have pumps pulling out magma. I did turn the priority down on the pumps up in our petroleum boiler because I don't really need it. Uh, this heat is still actually over 700 from the initial heat we dumped in there and it's made a lot of petroleum for us and the final thing I did for that is I installed this switch down here so this when it's on means that these are just run full bore so I'm just burning off petroleum as we make it right now because we have a big backlog and we're just going to get more water out of it and we're processing that and that leads us into what we're going to work on today up until now, I've just had these big tanks of water. They get easily mixed up because things overflow, things like that. I want to install a water treatment center. And I think that I'm going to put it over here because there's a lot of space. Um, because and when I'm, once I have moved it, uh, I'm trying to think how I want to do things. I want to start working on an end game base for our duplicates. And... It's, we're going to move away from here. I think we're going to put that down here. I think I'm going to ha might have enough space between this vent and this system down here. Not sure. But right here is a nice spot to do water treatment. So I might put it right next to the base, current base, and try to fit it in right in the middle. That way I still have space on the side if I want to put things there. Um, but... Our water treatment center for these, I'm going to set up some infinite storage for the three different types of water. I'm going to have some processing for those so that they will automatically desalinate salt water to make water. And if we run out of salt water to make more water, then we start processing our polluted water into water. I do it that way because prioritize wise, the polluted water I can use for crops. So I want to save it as polluted water uh, unless I really need it for regular water. Uh, the other reason I like having it right over here is because this oxygen system is going to stay. I may expand it and do a little more with it, but it's going to stay there. And so then the water is right next to it for us pumping it in for ease, and that will be good. And then we can set up our fluid control system all in here because we have our oil and petroleum is being processed here, our um, gases are being made here, and our water is all handled right here, nice tight area. So I'm going to get started laying out what we need to do to build that, and uh, then we will build it together. The foundation for our water treatment plant is down, and we are starting constructing some of the systems that we need to get in, inside to build. So the first room here on the left for each of these rooms is a decontamination room. So it's going to be a place where I can pump in water that has germs in it, and it will process it until there is no germs and then put it into the storage tank. The middle room here is our storage tank and then we will have space to put in our uh, water filtration systems. So this one on the bottom will be for our polluted water and then we'll have salt water in the middle and our water tank up at the top. And then up at the top, I'm going to have a space for each of those types of water so that I can uh, fill them up to the point where the pitcher pumps can access them and then they'll get shut off and that way we can keep water access for our duplicates to come along and grab for bottles in case we need them to deposit it somewhere 
uh, but most of the water will be stored in the infinite tank. The tank is here. It's going to have three drop-offs in each one. This one will be one that's connected to the decontamination room, and then there'll be two lines that come in. The water system, since I don't need a filtration system at the end, I have a lot more spaces, so I can have more drop-offs for water. Um, I will have three more that come in from this side as well. And it just made it larger just to fill it in to make everything look even aesthetically. It doesn't really need the extra space because we're storing the water infinitely. But there is nothing else to put there, so we decided to do that. I also left space in between for duplicates to walk through. And that's just because I need space for the piping. So I figured it would make it easier for them to get it around to get to our filtration rooms once they are sealed up. What we need to do first is get everything in here built and pump out all the gas. So that's why I put an extra block here and a bottle emptier so that we'll be able to put some water in to block it off. We'll pump out the oxygen that's in there. And then I have a pipe coming up from where we have our chlorine currently stored so we can fill the room with chlorine. So it's just a lot of little things to get put in place. All of this will need to be done before we seal the rooms up because we won't be going back into them because they'll be holding uh these rooms will be holding chlorine which we don't want to let out and this room will be holding our infinite uh, liquid storage so we don't want to have to break into there because then we'll have all of our liquids just exploding out across the map so this is meant to be a final place for all types of water with processing built in so that hopefully we don't have to come in here to do anything Making some progress here. We have this room vacuumed out now, which means I can pull this gas pump out. Fortunately, these rooms are pretty small, so they get vacuumed out pretty quick once I have the seal up. This one is sealed now. I just need to finish building the thing so they get pumped out. But we're going to focus on getting this room up and running together, and then I'll finish the rest off camera. So we're going to pull that pump out. And that means if I disconnect this from here and I connect this to here I can put in a gas vent right there where the gas pump was and that will allow us to pump chlorine in because I've already run this pipe down from our chlorine tanks so the chlorine will come out and it will fill up this room until the pressure is full and that's important because basically what we're using here is a mechanic where the uh, because the room is filled with chlorine the liquid going through it will slowly lose germs. And so the process is fairly simple. This line will bring in uh, polluted water that has germs in it. It'll hit this shutoff. The shutoff is connected to the reservoir through some automation to make it so that the reservoir will fill up to a certain point. And then there is just a pipe that circles the water out of the reservoir and back around. Up here, there is a germ sensor, and when the germ sensor says that there are zero germs, it will open up this shutoff, letting the liquid flow out to come into our storage, and then we'll have this sealed up by that point. But that means that water will only come through here, or polluted water will only come through here once it has cycled around long enough that all the germs have been decontaminated. And then we can start pumping it into here. And then I have these two lines for dedicated water coming in that I know doesn't have germs. So one's straight from um, uncontaminated sources like our geysers. But so we still have a little bit more to build here. Then we got to seal this room up so that we can have this room finished before we start turning it on. Um, for now, I ran a line from this is where our polluted water comes down for our crops and it does have germs in it. So it'll come through here, it'll cross over to this pipe, which will send it up to here, and then I ran a second line that is going to connect to one of our pumps that we will have in the storage that can pump polluted water back out to our crops and a dedicated line. Um, once this is all done and working, I will just open up this line so that we're not only sending over the overflow and we will just pump out all the polluted water. I already have automation up here to deal with the fact that I have this water mixed here and that should help us get deal with the salt water. Problem is, is that 
our filter is just completely full of salt water. So we'll probably have to get this, this one up and running before we deal with that. And if we look at our germs, there are germs all throughout all of this water. So we have to get it all processing into the correct places through the decontamination rooms. But we'll get it there. It'll just take it some time. I find it very funny that no matter what happens, if you're not paying attention, your duplicates will find ways to get in the way. Beth decided to pin this wall from the inside and was trapped. But so we have everything here working, uh, piping wise and everything. We just need to get this wall closed up, preferably from the outside, Beth. Oh, I see. She doesn't want to do it from there because there's water to stand in. Yeah, it's going to be an issue. All right, let's get her to supply it. And then move to here. It's not going to work. Um, trying to think of the best way that I can get that done. For now, I think I'm just going to have to let it go. Move out here. They are so mind-numbingly frustrating sometimes. Break this one. See if we can get her to do this one. Uh, but we have uh, polluted water dropping off into here now. This is not flowing quite yet because... Um, oh, you know what? I missed something in there anyway. What we need to do is we need to make it so that this system will continue to loop so that we have a constant flow of water. So we need to get rid of this pipe or this bridge, I mean, so that we can put a bridge down here that comes back up and goes through. Um, yeah, so I think we're going to have to re redo that a little bit. But basically what happens is it fills this pipe up, and since there's nowhere for it to go, it stops. What I want is for that to loop. So I need to create a looping system here. Um, we could do it. Let's not, let's not deconstruct that. Let's do a liquid bridge. Um, here and above, which means we'll have to put a ladder in here. And then that way we can make it so that it loops across this, it comes back down here, comes in here, and then goes back through. It'll be a little bit, a little complicated, but it'll all fit within that system that we have. Uh, except that I want this to go there. Yeah, let me figure this out uh, off camera so I can figure out the best way to put this piping in and then we'll go from there. Gotten the chlorine room worked out. Basically real simple, just put a jump here. So as it's coming out of here, it goes past the germ sensor. If it does has germs, it goes over here, jumps across to here, which flows it back into here. Uh, this is the input from our uh, intake also goes into there um, this won't allow any more in if this gets above 90 percent until it goes back down to 10 percent which means that this will just keep cycling till all the germs are gone and then it'll start dumping out and it'll let more in once we have space for it i don't have it connected to let out the outtake so far because this isn't finished built so this is pretty simple i just have four pumps they're going to have power connected to them this one will go to this line, this one has this line, and then there's two lines going down. Right now I'm gonna connect them both to run out to the crops. Um, each one of them has their own hydro sensor so I can adjust their settings on each one. Basically, that way I have a switch in here, I can turn pumps off without disconnecting anything. 
pretty simple. So once all this gets built, I can put in the airflow tiles, seal the room up, and we can start letting fluid in here for storage. The way the infinite storage works is these, these airflow tiles keep gas trapped in them so that there's no pressure problems from the uh, water building up, or in this case, polluted water building up, and it will uh, keep it from breaking any of these tiles. The airlocks can't break either, and then there will be gas pushed up into each of these vents, which means that since this gas has to stay there, the liquid can't go up, and we won't have any pressure problems at the top, and we will have uh, opening for the liquid vent to constantly drop down fluid, and so we'll just build up an infinite supply of polluted water. So all we need to do is get all of this... Oop, I don't want to do that. All of this finished being built, and then this room is finished for there, and then we just have to do the automation for the filtration system, but that is not a priority. I just want to get this processing polluted water. Right now, the polluted water that's coming in is coming off of our bathroom, and I do not want it to back up so that we have problems with that. So as soon as this is finished being built, we can seal it up, connect this wire, and then bathroom water will get dropped into here. It'll get processed fast enough that it goes into here, and it will be taken out. I think. Yes, that is directly from the bathrooms. It's also the overflow from this polluted water, which we can pull out as well, but that can't go anywhere until we get rid of the salt water problem that's blocking up our filters. So for the salt water, I ran a line from here. I'm running all the way across and down to here, and that's gonna connect into here. So that's gonna do the same thing here. I just need to get this room finished being built, and then we can do the same thing here, and we'll have both of them processing. And then it'll be a matter of bringing over the regular water to get that done. Everything for our polluted water system has been built here. So we have polluted water being de-germified in here. You can see the germs inside this reservoir go down fairly quickly. Right now, they don't quite get all the way down to zero before more polluted water comes in. And that's fine, because there's storage in here. But what will happen is, once this hits 90%, so the tank is 90% is full, it will send a red signal up to the shutoff, and it won't go back to green until... So it sends a green signal when it reaches the low threshold, and until high is reached again, sends a red signal when high is threshold until low is reached again. So when it hits the 90, it'll send a red signal and it won't turn back to green until the low signal comes out. So for now, it's gonna keep getting more and more germs pulled in there until the tank gets full. Once the tank is mostly full, it'll hit 90% and it will cycle until it can start emptying uh, flew it out, and then it will empty it all the way down to 10%, and then it'll start dumping in more. We can actually probably make this like 1%, that way we get almost all of it out. Uh, actually, we could make it 0%. But let's say, let's say we make this so that this is 14%. So right now it's full, which means it's sending a red signal. There is fluid in here, it's getting turned down to zero germs because of the chlorine. Once the germs hit zero, we'll see the, the this pump activate. We can actually watch the, the, the signal go there once it gets to it. But it will activate and it will let the polluted water out, which means that this tank will get down to 0%, which will then send a green signal, and it will stay green, letting more fluid in until we get up to the high threshold. So we can leave it at a small amount for now, just so that we can have it working and processing polluted water. This system is set up so right now it just pumps out. As soon as it goes in, it goes down to our crops. Um, we can adjust the settings once we have a, b a backup of polluted water. The reason that we're not gonna have a huge amount of polluted water for now is because, as I said before, our water system over here, our old system, is backed up with salt water. 
So the polluted water has nowhere to go because it's trying to get the salt water that built up in here to filter back into the salt water tank and has nowhere to go with it. But once this pipe is finished and we can start processing salt water, then we'll, we'll see that change. Oh, here we go. Now, this is down to a very small amount of germs, meaning this has zero. So when the germs come out, they hit zero before they hit here, they're getting passed out. So if we look at the polluted water in here, oh, it has 18 germs. Why is it letting germ, germy water in? There may have been a few germs left in there. And we may have to tweak it just a little bit. Let's see, polluted water. Hmm, I may have to work that out a little bit to figure out the problem. But we're gonna get this one finished up here. I need this hydro sensor or this germ sensor to be finished before I can close this off. We'll close this room and we'll start letting salt water get processed as well. And then we can work out all the kinks. <laughs> So our salt water tank is working. That's all being processed and dumped in here. The polluted water tank is also working. Uh, we have added in a line that comes straight from our geysers that's getting dropped in because this water is, not we know it has no pollutants. It's coming straight out of the geysers and they don't have any pollutants. So it's just getting dumped right into storage. So this is starting to build up now. And if we look at our germs, the salt water and this polluted water is all germ free. Do we have some germs in the air? No, we're good. So we're going to not have any issues with germs once they're in here, and we'll be able to have germ-free polluted water and salt water. And we're working on finishing up the water tank. The issue I'm having right now is that this is our polluted water reservoir. It got completely filled, and now it's being emptied out. And that is the water coming from our sewage system in the base the problem is is that it still has 1580 kilograms to empty out before it's going to let any more in and our bathrooms are starting to back up it's not a lot and so it's pretty close so what i'm going to do to fix it is this system here we're going to lower this down to 75 and so that means that this is going to fill up about 2,000 or two kilograms less before it or maybe it's maybe it's one kilogram less. Maybe we should go. Let me do the math. So if it's 5,000 kilograms times 0.95, that was 4750. If it is 5,000 kilograms times 0.75, that's 3750. So that's a thousand more so every 10 is 500 so if i want to have 2000 extra i need to go down to 65 i think yes that should be that'd be 1500 so 60 60 is what i want if we go to 60 next time this runs this will fill up to 60 which is 60 percent of 5000 is 3,000 kilograms, and 3,000 kilograms will empty out before this has time to back up all the way back to the base. So that means we won't have issues with our sewage system backing up from this coming out. We also have water coming into here from our um, filtration tank, which is also adding to this um, amount of water here. And so we can probably increase it once we get that empty. But what that means is that for right now, I need to wait until this empties the whole way out, which is just going to take a little bit longer, but it might block a couple of our sinks up here. So I'm hoping that we can get it emptied before it gets backed up to the point where it causes a problem with the bathrooms themselves. But the next time it will empty out much faster, and so it won't take as long and it won't get backed up. And so we'll just have this processing more often to get this backlog of polluted water in here out we don't have any more polluted water going into this tank 
So this will all process much faster now that we're going. We do have, this pump is pulling it out, but it's pulling it out with a mix of salt water too. And as the salt water is still processing, it's gonna take it a little bit of time. What we could do, uh, I don't wanna, I. I don't want to pull the salt water is coming up from here. I still want it to run through the filter and get dropped in here and go through decontamination because that water is coming from this tank down here. And if we look in real close and look at germs, there's not a lot, but there are germs. There's only like a thousand compared to up here where it is concentrated and there's quite a bit of germs. It's still germs. I don't want to get any germs into our tank. So we're just going to have to let it process. But all, both of these are now processing polluted water and salt water. We're finishing up all the plumbing inside the water tank. We'll seal that up and we'll start processing water too. And then we'll add in our filtration rooms so that we can continue to stock the water if it gets low. For now, I have so much water that we'll be able to fill that tank up. No problem. And not have to filter any but we're going to have to pretty soon because we're using water at a pretty good rate. The other thing we need to do is I have these plumbing lines coming out of this water tank. I have it set up so there's one, two, three, four, um, and then five coming here and then six. So they're all coming from this side and then there's two more that can come out of this side. So I'm gonna have to go and connect one of those we're actually probably we'll just connect two of them together and then we'll run one of those lines all the way down and run that into our oil system so that our oil can pull water from our new tank and then we'll start emptying this tank directly into the new water treatment center and then that means that all of our water processing will come from here so we'll have a line from here that goes to oil and then we'll run a line from here from this side that comes out here and goes in to our oxygen system and our base. I'll probably have a dedicated line for each of them. Just checked our time and we're running really close to our 30 minute mark. And I don't really wanna go over with this episode. Uh, this construction, we're gonna let finish. We'll seal this up and we'll get the, the clean water connected here. And in between episodes, we'll let it run for a while so that we can start getting some of these liquids moved over the issue is it took us a couple hundred cycles to get these tanks filled up maybe not that long but it took us a long time it's going to take us a long time to get them emptied into the storage we also still have all of this down here that needs to be processed and so we'll probably end up moving our filter and putting it into a system over here somewhere and maybe scale up how much we're pumping in to that system so that we can empty it faster or we might just let it go slowly over the next couple hundred cycles because the next goals that we're going to be working on is focusing back on our achievement list and our achievement list is focusing on a large portion of it is focusing on going into space and so we can let this process here while we are doing a couple of things which is one setting up our space area here and launching rockets and also going to our other asteroid through our teleporter. So we have a lot of time where we can just let this go once we have this set up and we can just uh, not think about it and let it do its thing. So I'll finish this up between episodes and we'll let it keep processing while we work on more stuff in the future. But this is gonna be our end game water system. This will store all the water we can throw at it and it will have plenty of uh, inputs and outputs for us to handle all the water that we uh, will have in this colony. Hope you enjoyed watching this episode. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.